What is up everybody and welcome back to another Grimlock video today. I'm going to be going over a comment I received in my stream the other day uh, and basically my response to the comment. So uh, I think this will help a lot of people, especially in lower rated solo shuffles, start grinding up the rating a lot. Uh, I think this will help you guys reach a lot of your goals. Uh, definitely at least to get your elite sets. So um, yeah, definitely check this out. I'll leave the comment right here so you guys can read it. There, right there so you guys can read it um, but yeah basically this is just my response to that comment also uh, I'm gonna leave his comment the next stream after uh, basically saying that it helped him a bunch uh, you can also see that right there there so yeah uh, I hope you guys enjoy the video if you do please remember to like subscribe and comment down below if you enjoy this type of content I will see you guys again soon and uh, yeah I hope you enjoy this explanation of why it's so important to swap targets and your targeting in general is super super important so I will uh, see you guys next time thanks Uh, like he fucks up rotation, he makes misplays, and he even then gets to climb, so I'm missing something. Yeah, so the reason why Venruki and like all these other pro, like high rated players kind of get like free outs. I won't call them free, but the reason why they push is because, like, for instance, so Venruki's been playing the game for years, years and years and years. So he understands like which situations he should be attacking people and which situations he should be running from people and also he understands the concept of like positioning entirely every every like high rated player is really good at positioning or like decent at positioning but yeah so so positioning plays a huge role in being able to push and also kill like knowing which target is kill target and that doesn't matter whether your rotation is like good or not or like even if you're pressing your buttons properly or not because realistically if you have a perfect damage rotation and you do that perfect damage rotation into someone's shield wall they're still not going to die right whereas a professional player might do a terrible damage rotation and do like 40 percent less damage or 30 percent less damage than a normal player but they do it into the proper targets all the time they're going to force more cooldowns than a person with a perfect damage rotation hitting into shield walls if you know what i'm saying right so, like, Van Ruki, for instance, even though, as Affliction, he might be, like, really bad at his damage rotation, he's hitting the targets that should be hit. And he's positioning himself in a position where he can't die most of the time. Because he understands the concept of positioning and kill targets. So, like, at a core, you can play near-perfect damage rotation-wise, which, which is why PvEers tend to not do amazing in PvP, right? I mean... Yeah, they do decent. Look at Trill. Trill's amazing. Trill's a great player. But, um, you know, uh, obviously if you combine the skills of both, you get a rank 1 player. Like, if you if you do perfect damage rotation, perfect positioning, and perfect kill target, you're going to win the game. Like, that's, like, ideal. But if you do wrong kill target, and you do perfect damage rotation, it, it like, counterproducts each other. You know what I mean? So, like, even though Venruki might not be perfect with his rotation or his positioning might be a little off one game he knows which target should die at what time in the game and what not to pump damage into you know and also like at the same time um you know on one one side of the coin maybe he does a perfect damage rotation one game and maybe the next game he doesn't do a damage like a good damage rotation so it, it depends on the game too it's opening my mind, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you got to think of it like... Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just that simple. Um, and also, one thing you want to look look out for... So, let me open up my YouTube again real quick. Let me see if I can show you <coughs> an example of doing damage to a perfect target uh, at the right time. Okay, so yeah, it is this game. It is this one. So, oh shit, whoops. Um, so, let's see. I think it's actually the last round. Yeah, it's this last round. So, I want to show you an example. So, this whole game this entire game not one time not any time in the whole series did anyone look at or even target this demon hunter the, he only got cc'd like the whole game because everybody knows demon hunters are relatively hard to kill if you don't have a stun on your team and none of our teams really had a consistent stun so um 
we're not even looking at the Demon Hunter. Even on the Demon Hunter Windwalker games, we're looking at the Windwalker mainly. Um, which could be a little bit of an oversight. And it is an oversight. And that's why this last game, specifically, I actually call it in the video. Let me see if I can call it. I actually call it, like, right here. One second. The P. Fake cast so let's this. see here, ready? Let's see if he fakes himself. So we do pretty big Kinda damage here. There. There's no reason, because he's... I kick penance. Big damn here. Big oh, wait, damn here. wait, wait, wait. Apps. It's before this. Sorry. Whatever. Crush the shaman. So look at that, right, right, right here. Uh, I might be actually no, no more. Videos. Yeah, so right here. So, um, you can see my druid gets a clone onto the uh, priest right as soon as the shield wall falls off of this shaman, which is exactly what I wanted crush, him to yeah, do. Nice, nice. It's a good swap on the clone. Good swap on the clone. We swap to the right. shaman here. Let's crush this guy. He has no, no more cooldowns. At no all. more cooldowns. And I didn't realize he had burrow, so he burrows. That's his. That's his burrow. So, instead of hitting the priest here. Or doing nothing except for like keeping my team alive. It's huge. I'm gonna crush this. I say I crush this demon hunter here. Just demon hunter because he hasn't. Because he hasn't actually been touched at all. He's actually been touched at all, right? So I'm gonna crush this demon hunter here because he hasn't been touched at all. So watch how close I get to killing this demon hunter because he doesn't realize that he's indestructible. So this whole game, he's been thinking, I am not the kill target. I'm never gonna die. There's no reason for me to worry about over aggressing or being like. In their face, oh. right? So what that's he what his, does he do? It's huge. I pull him as far away from the priest as possible. Line of sight the priest here. You see the priest positioning is over here. I'm over here. Just demon hunter because he hasn't actually. So completely out of line of sight of his priest, and I'm like, I'm gonna. Uh, so that's why I pulled this way. You've been touched at all these games. Pull him as far as possible. So I think. Boom. I might be able to catch him off. I get him to 29k health and force nether walk immediately, as well as blur. Guard here. And. Yeah, he has no clue what's going on. Big. The healer has to waste, like, time healing him, so he doesn't even top off the shaman here, like, throughout the whole burrow, right? And I land <laughs> a half fear like out, a half, uh, a half, half, half sleep. Fear, basically. See so, uh, nice. yeah, big damage here on the shaman. And so by doing that type of swap right there, now the demon hunter realizes, oh, I'm a kill target, and now I have no cooldowns left, and I don't have trinket. So now the demon hunter plays way more defensively, it's and this cool actually cool. ends up winning us the game pretty, yeah. pretty the, uh, substantially. Like actually play that well, up to 2k MMR slash 1900 MMR. Should a rank one slash glad always go 6-0 or 5-1 or not true? Is it possible due to counters and teammates to go 3-3 or even losing at those MMRs as a rank one point of view? Um, so the thing is, is that no matter what, when you're playing solo shuffle, you're relying semi on your teammates' abilities to actually play the game at like a good level. So even being a rank one player or like a multi glad player, uh, when you fight people at like 1900, they kind of understand the game, but they overlap cooldowns a lot, and a lot of times they don't respect damage. So I notice. Actually, let me pull up my 1900 game and see if I can pull point out some point of views. Like my 1900 ish range games on my YouTube is no matter what you deal with teammates. So like this game, for instance. I think I get, what do I get here? Do I get a 4-2 or do I get a 5-1? I get a 5-1 this game, right? Um, even though the MMR is like 1920, I get the 5-1. It doesn't matter really what, what team comp they're playing. Like, they're playing Rhett Unholy, which is kind of bad for me. Demon Hunter is also kind of bad for me. So it's a full melee lobby, and I go 5-1 at 1900. So I wouldn't say the composition really matters as much as like like the the actual classes don't really matter what you're fighting against what matters is how well your teammates perform and if they know what they're doing so like it's very possible for a 2k or a 1900 if you're rank one it is very possible to go 3-3 in those lobbies i would say it's very unlikely to go 2-4 or 1-5 or 0-6 because that would be your fault mainly but it's very possible to go 3-3 three, three if, like, one of the healers is just really bad at the game. You know what I mean? So, like, if these healers didn't pair up well and one was just significantly worse than the other, um, you're going to notice that apparently, and there's not much you can do about it other than try to make as many plays as possible to keep your team safer. But something that you have to do in the first round of a solo shuffle game or the first or second round early, early on in solo shuffle is realize who the worst player is in the lobby. Once you can start capitalizing on who's the worst player in the lobby, you kind of have to, like, 
abuse that, you know? Like, I, a lot of the times, if, like, I notice one player is just significantly worse than the other players, uh, I'll, I'll try to use that against them as much as possible. And when they're on my team, I'll try to cater to the fact that they're the worst player as much as possible because I know other players are going to start trying to abuse them as well. So that's something you have to think of as well when you're at, like, 2K MMR. The reason I ask is because I'm at 1,800, 1,900 MMR at the moment, and I can sometimes go 6-0 and also 1-5 sometimes, so I want to identify what's keeping me from climbing besides myself. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's, I, I wouldn't say it's impossible, but 1-5s, like 0-6, 1-5s, and 2-4s realistically shouldn't happen if you're playing really well. I had a lot of healer, healers glads in my lobbies that said I kite well. What class are you playing? Are you playing Devastation Evoker? If you're playing Devastation Evoker, it probably comes down to utilizing like a damage rotation type thing. And also probably target priority. You're probably struggling with target priority, to be honest. Like, after this game, I'll show you. In this, like, our, our composition is just better. So, uh, you'll notice I take advantage early on here of the healer because of his positioning. So one, the healers like AFK this whole opener, which is really bad for them, <laughs> which is a shame. All right, so you're right here. When I when after out of the stun, I deep breath across the map to one make distance from the death knight, and two, I actually end up hitting the preservation evoker. So I'm like, great, I'll go preservation evoker, force the emerald community immediately, and you'll see right <coughs> right when I force the emerald communion, I look. So let's see here. So look at Preservation Evoker could die here easily. So he Emerald Communions, which is the proper response. But as he's Emerald Communioning, I kind of tilt my camera so that I can hit both him and the, the Balance Druid. And I'm just gunning down this Balance Druid now at this point. Force him into bear form. And it just does not matter. So it's just that, like, just forcing damage like this in the opener. So one, I distance myself from the Death Knight. I also force Icebound because he doesn't want to Trinket, but he Icebounds my stun. And I actually land on everything except for the Balance Druid. But you can see this this healer just... What does this healer even die from? I actually don't know. So my Demon Hunter goes... I actually have no clue what does this much damage to this healer. It must have been the Demon Hunter. I think he, I think he Verdant Embraces... Oh, he gets Fell Barrage by my Demon Hunter. That's what happens. So the Fell Barrage plus my Deep Breath forces Emerald Communion. And boom. I immediately swap to Restoration Druid because Emerald Communion is going to keep... Basically, the way Emerald Communion works is it heals the lowest target, like the lowest health pool target individually. So it'll be like one tick here, 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 one tick here. You know, so if one target is low in health, it'll tick on that person, and then the other target's low in health, it'll tick on the other person, which is why you want to split pressure during Emerald Communion. So the second Emerald Communion came out on the Preservation Evoker, and he was low in health, I knew that if I swapped to the rest or, or the Balanced Druid, it's going to keep the Balanced Druid low in health because it's going to force the Emerald Communion to split healing between the Preservation Evoker and... So, like, they're both 50% here. Uh, but it forces it to heal both people, so it's actually wasting a lot of the Emerald Communion. And you can see after the Emerald Communion ends, the Balance Druid is still at like 20% health. And now he has nothing left to heal this guy except for maybe a Rewind. So he goes for a Rescue. He goes for a Rewind right here, and as soon as the Rewind lands, boom. Boomkin's dead already. So we literally force everything in a single go just based on target priority there. Um, I will say... I could have pumped the damage into the Death Knight, and it wouldn't have mattered whether I was doing Death Knight or Balance Druid, but I figured because we were going Balance Druid to begin with, and I'm playing with a Demon Hunter, I want to do as much damage as possible to the target my Demon Hunter is going to be able to do as much damage to, and so that's how that happened. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's what I mean by target priority, is, is you definitely want to make sure you're hitting the proper target at the proper time. Um, in your in your goes you want to make sure you're not like losing out on possible damage so like if somebody shield walls and it, say you deep breath two targets and one of them presses bark skin and the other one doesn't you want to hit the one that doesn't press shield wall you know it's just that simple and obviously that's like this sounds easier to do on paper but a lot of people don't recognize that early on and you'll force another shield wall and then you can go like oh okay well which one is going to take more damage in my go is it going to be the cloth wearer that my 
when Walker Monk is punching into, or is it going to be the plate wearer? It's going to be the cloth wearer, so I attack the cloth wearer. You know what I mean? That, it's just that simple. You want to make sure you're abusing that kind of stuff. What about situations that ha uh, What about the situations that happen almost 99% of the time where your teammate never swaps, and you end up doing split damage? That's perfectly fine. That's okay, because you're forcing the cooldowns on your own, honestly. Like, you don't have to... You, like, actually, one second. Um, before I watch the rest of this game... <coughs> So, so look at this. I called a swap to the resto druid in the beginning of this match. So you'll see right here. I told the, my teammate to watch for it specifically. So I root the, both the DPS here. And you'll see I pop my Dragon Rage. I stack up my Dragon Rage. And I pressing Roar everything. And so look at So he lands. He finally, he lands the root beam. And because I had pressing Roar this first, right here, I land my deep breath on everything. And uh, this is what I, I am solely going the Druid here. He has he has Moonfire and Sunfire up. But he's actually going the Death Knight, if you look at the Death Knight's health. And by the time he realizes I'm going the Druid, I actually killed the Druid myself. <laughs> so, like, by the time he actually ended up going the Druid there at the end, I, I f solely did all the damage myself here. He goes Bark Skin. And I didn't even tip the scales fire breath because I was waiting for this druid to press overgrowth on himself, which he presses literally the millisecond he dies. I, I don't know if it actually shows it, but pretty sure he presses it the millisecond he dies. Right here. So I catch it right here. But you can see, so all, all, all his hots come up right here. And so the reason why I didn't tip the scales fire breath is because I wanted him to do this first. So if he lived here for some reason, even on this disintegrate tick right here, but this disintegrate tick crits and kills him. I could have tipped the scales fire breath and all his hots would be deleted and I would still kill him. So no matter what, he was dead at that point. Like he was actually just gone. So like, yeah, that's obviously perfect situation. You know, I land on everybody, but I still do all the damage pretty much myself here. Yeah, that's literally all me right there. <laughs>